Welcome to the 2017 edition of the National Science and Math Quiz. Today we bring you the 15th 1A stage contest which features West Africa Senior High School, Bueman Senior High School, and Sunyani Senior High School. <laughs> Let's meet the contestants. Sunyani Senior High School. <laughs> Sunyani Senior High School is represented by Watson Henry, final year. Uti Watson Joseph, final year. <laughs> You're welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, madam. How are you? We are fine. Thank you. Actually, I think we have quite a bit to talk about. Mm. First of all, tell us a bit about your school. Um, Sunyani Senior High School was founded in the year 1960, and is the only school in Brafo that has the patriotic motto, Memainti and Yeminti. Okay, that's very nice. This year, you are coming from the prelims. Yes, my love. Because you have some history with your next door neighbors, West Africa Senior High School, don't you? Yeah, we do. So what happened? Let's start with last year. What happened with them? And then we'll talk about prelims. Last year's contest was a tough one between our seniors and their predecessors. Mm -hmm. And they beat us by a point. One point? Yeah. So how does it feel to be so close? <laughs> well, it's painful to be beaten by a point when you are willing to go very far. But at least we have the chance to make it up. Good. All right. Now the prelims. How did they go for you? The prelims was also a tough contest, but by God's grace, we were able to make it. OK. And the expectations for today? We are going to do our best and then be victorious and go to the next stage. All right. Best wishes to you. Thank you. West Africa Senior High School. West Africa Senior High School is represented by... Tadi Abdul Hamid, second year. Akosaini, second year. You're welcome, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, you madam. How are you? You are doing fine. fine. Good. So you are a seeded school? Yes, yes. ma'am. I'm sure the legend of how you eliminated your next door neighbors has gone around the school several times. Yes, madam. Okay. What else did your seniors tell you to prepare to come here this time? Our seniors told us to be studious and we should take our book serious. And if you come here, you should calm down when we answer our questions. Calm down. Yes. All right. That's good to know. But a little bit more about your school. Okay. West Africa Senior High School was established in 1946 uh, at uh, Newtown, um, previously called Lagos Town. Now we have relocated to Adenta. And our message is... Hey. <laughs> <laughs> our message is, in God we trust. In God you trust. In okay. God we trust. Best wishes to you. Thank you. <laughs> Bueman Senior High School. Bueman Senior High School is represented by Uklaja Isaac, final year. Agusi Manuel, final year. You are welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. How are you? We are all fine. Good. Now, uh, first tell us a little bit about your school. Bueman Senior High School was established in the year 1960 
by the late Christopher Kweku Nayo, who was then the first BWIM member of parliament. The school is located in Jaska, and that is the northern part of Uta region. All right. Thank you. Now, your path so far, you've come through the prelims. Yes, ma'am. How did it go? The prelims was quite tough when we have to contest with our senior high school and then Timan senior high school. But with God be on our side, we were able to win, to win them. Mm -hmm. Good. And so this contest, what should we expect? Uh, we can't say anything now, but the battle is a lot. Pardon? We can't say anything now, but the battle is a lot. The battle is a lot. Mm -hmm. Best wishes. Hmm. We've met the contestants. This year's contest, hmm, the battle has been the Lord's many times. Yes. It shall continue to be so. Before I sit down, I would like to acknowledge that the National Science and Math Quiz is sponsored by the Ghana Education Service through the Conference of Heads of Assisted Secondary School. We are also supported by TIGO, Goyle, Accra College of Medicine, Prudential Life Insurance, and uh, GCB Bank. We are produced by Primetime. Thank you. My name is Dr. Elsie Efa Kaufman. I am a senior lecturer in the Department of Biomedical Engineering, University of Ghana, and I'm your quiz mistress. Contestants, there are five rounds of competition. The first round is a round for fundamental concepts. I have simple and direct questions for you. You are expected to answer simply and directly. If you answer your major question correctly, three points. If the question is incorrectly answered, it becomes available to the two other schools to ring for. If a school rings and answers correctly, a bonus point. If the answer is incorrect, it fetches a penalty point. For questions that require calculations, you have 30 seconds to present your answer. If there are no calculations involved, you have 10 seconds to do so. All of the questions are to be attempted once only. Best wishes to all three schools. The first set of questions will require about 30 seconds of your time. I'm going to start with West Africa Senior High School. Your question. A projectile is launched at 75 degrees to the horizontal with a speed of 20 meters per second. Determine the horizontal distance it travels when it returns to its launch level. Abdul. Madam, please, 20 meters. You are right. <laughs> Sunyani. 
find the launch speed of a projectile projected at 15 degrees above the horizontal, whose horizontal range is 80 meters. Yes, Oti. 40 meters per second. You're right. <laughs> Women, find the horizontal range of a projectile launched at 15 degrees above the horizontal with a speed of 30 meters per second. Yes, Emmanuel. 15 meters. That's incorrect. Yes, uh, OT. 45 meters per yes. second. Yes. Huh? <laughs> what was it? 45 meters. meters per second. That's incorrect. The right answer is 45 meters. Preamble to all schools. When I get to your school, I will give you a description. I will give you a description. To which of the vertebrate classes does the description refer? Do you have the preamble? All right. So now, uh, West Africa. Aquatic, aquatic larvae possess gills. Yes, Isaac. Class amphibia. Yes. <laughs> Sunyane, they are warm blooded. Yes, Oti. Class mammalia. Two out of three. <laughs> yes, mammalia and also the aves. Women. Any two that reproduce by laying eggs. Isaac. The class Eves and conjugates. Class Eves and the class conjugates. Yes. yes. There are several of them. Two of them will be fine. Preamble to all schools. 30 seconds. Find the first term A and the common difference D of an AP whose, do you have the preamble? All right. So now West Africa, ninth term is 26 and 20th term is 59. Yes, Abdul. Madam, please, the first term is two, and the common defense is three. Yes. <laughs> With the same preamble, 16th term is 110, and 11th term is 75. Yes, O.T. The first term is five, and the common difference is seven. You are right. <laughs> Tenth 
term is 37 and 21st term is 70. Yes, Abdul. Madam, please, the first term is 10, and the common difference is 3. Yes. Your major question. Which of these compounds will not show hydrogen bonding in the liquid state? Please give your reasons. And the compounds are... BH3, 2, MENH2, HF, H2S, and HCHO. Yes, Abdul. Madam, please. H2S, H2S, PH3, and then HCHO. And the reason is that um, sulfur, the sulfur is not, um, it's not electronegative enough, and therefore it doesn't polarize the uh, H plus ion effectively, so that hydrogen bonding can take place between the uh, partially charged um, partially, partially positive charge H plus ion and then the S2 minus ion. And also with the C, uh, HCHO, the CH bond donates with the CHO, it is an organic compound, and most organic compounds are covalent and therefore do not have hydrogen bonding. And with the BH3, BH3 is not electronegative enough. And, uh, and in hydrogen bonding, the central the central atom should be electronegative so as to make the compound a hydrogen. Uh, you have are a hydrogen trying bonding. to give a dissertation on this. I'm giving you two out of three. <laughs> you made the right choices. Your explanation for H2S was very good. But then you went on and started saying things, but the explanation actually could have been extended to the others as well. It's much simpler than you think. In all the three compounds, hydrogen is not bonded to a very electronegative atom. So that's what you need. You need hydrogen to be bonded to a very electronegative atom before you can have hydrogen bonding. All right. Sunyane. Ethanoic acid shows a special kind of intermolecular hydrogen bonding. Describe it and give the outcome of this bonding. Yes, OT. Adam, in ethanoic acid, the C double bond O attracts electrons to itself and thus strengthens the OH bond in it. I'm not accepting that for bonus. Okay. So there is hydrogen bonding between pairs of the molecules to give dimers. That's the outcome. So you have dimers, okay? Hydrogen of OH on one to C double bond O on the other molecule and vice versa. Okay, so you have dimers. 
Women, there is extensive hydrogen bonding in liquid water. Give two properties of water due solely to the strong hydrogen bonding. Yes, Emmanuel. One, the first one is the surface tension property of water. Then the second one is the curve, surf, uh, the curve nature, that is the meniscus of the water. It causes it to bend and was in it too. No, two out of three. <laughs> the two is for the high surface tension. And the other one could have been the higher boiling point of water as compared to H2S or water expanding when it freezes. Next set, 30 seconds, and there's a preamble to all schools. Preamble. The terminal voltage of a battery is 10 volts when a one ohm resistor is connected across its terminals and eight volts when, zero, when a 0 0.4 ohm resistor is connected across its terminals. Did you get it or shall I repeat it? Repeat. The terminal voltage of a battery is 10 volts when a 1 ohm resistor is connected across its terminals and 8 volts when a 0 0.4 ohm resistor is connected across its terminals. Now, West Africa. What is the internal resistance of the battery? Abdul. Madam, please, the internal resistance is 2 ohms. That's incorrect. For a bonus. The right answer is 0 0.2 ohms. Sunyane, with the same preamble, what is the EMF of the battery? OT? 8.3 volts. That's incorrect for a bonus. The right answer is 12 volts. Women, with the same preamble, what is the terminal voltage when a 2.8 ohm resistor is connected across the terminals of the battery? Yes, Emmanuel. 36 votes. 36 votes. That's incorrect. For a bonus. The right answer is 11.2 volts. Next set. State the advantages of the following properties to wind-pollinated flowers. I hope you got that. West Africa. Stigma hangs outside the flower. Yes, Sahine. Uh, it, it enables the wind to be able to um, have free space to blow off the large pollen grains from the stigma. No. Yes. It exposes the pollen grains to be carried away by the winds to pollinate other flowers. It, it exposes the pollen grains on the stigma so they can be efficiently carried away by the wind. No. The right answer is to catch the drifting pollen. Sunyane, 
pollen produced in great quantities. Yes, Henry. Uh, the, the pollen produced in great quantities helps uh, displace more pollen to the outside environment so that it can be, the probability that it can be captured by uh, the stigma increases. That's why. I'm not accepting that for bonus. This compensates for the indirect and somewhat risky means of transport. So if you have a lot of them, then it compensates for this uh, risky way of transporting the pollen. Women, no scent. Yes, Isaac. It prevents the flowers from it prevents the flowers from being attacked or disturbed by insects and other predators. Yes. Thirty seconds for the next set. I have a short preamble. Express each term in exponential form. Your term. West Africa, fifth root of seven to the power six. Yes, Abdul. Seven to the power six over five. You are right. <laughs> Sunyane. Cube root of 10 to the power of 4. Yes, Oti. 10 to the power of 4 over 3. Yes. <laughs> Women, fourth root of 23 to the power of negative 5. Yes, Emmanuel. Like one over twenty-three exponent five over four. No, that's too strange. Yes, which of you, Abdul? Twenty-three to the power minus five over four. Yes, that's much simpler. <laughs> Last set of questions, 30 seconds. West Africa. In a titration of aqueous Na2CO3 against dilute HCl using methyl orange as indicator, 25.0 centimeter cubed of the base required 28.0 centimeter cubed of 0 0.10 mole per decimeter cubed HCl. What was the concentration of the Na2CO3 solution? Please give your answer to three places of decimal. Yes, Abdul. And I'm pleased, 0 0.224 mole per dm cube. That's incorrect for a bonus. The right answer is 0 0.056 mole per decimeter cubed. Sunyane, in the titration of aqueous NaHCO3 against dilute HCl using methyl orange as indicator, 20.0 centimeter cubed of the base required 16.0 centimeter cubed of 0 0.12 mole per decimeter cubed HCl. Calculate the concentration of the base and give your answer to three places of decimal.
Yes, Henry. 0 0.096 mole per dm cube. You are right. <laughs> Women, to determine the concentration of a solution of Na2CO3, 25.0 centimeter cubed of the solution was titrated against 0 0.15 mole per decimeter cubed HCl solution using phenolphthalein as indicator. If the titer was 18.0 centimeter cubed, calculate the concentration of the base and give your answer to three places of decimal. For bonus. The right answer is 0 0.108 mole per decimeter cubed. And that brings us to the end of the first round.